I think we should wrap it up there. <laughs> hey, only Canberra this time of year can have a fireside chat. <laughs> well, we've got the, the burning blaze of the spotlights. That'll have to do. <sighs> So tonight we are celebrating some of Australia's brightest minds in STEM and as you've just articulated, uh, you have uh, an intention to improve the way in which we do STEM and the people mm. and bring in more people, more and different people uh, to support that. I'm particularly curious about how you see things working really, really well when we are truly embracing those two different knowledge systems, when we are weaving together the 60,000 years of innovation that this country is very, very privileged to call its own with that new knowledge that's coming out of our, our institutions and our cutting, ed uh, cutting edge researchers. Mm. Um, so I, uh, I, I look at it this way. We have uh, these significant uh, national and global challenges one of the big things in my role now, just to let you all know, I'm really leaning in on the whole transition to net zero. Um, we, we can't afford to, we've dithered for too long, uh, argued for too long. We now got the planet experiencing the hottest July in human history. Uh, we know, and you have all been saying this to us, and you've all been ignored for too long and seen what, what's happened. We, we do have a chance to make things better and there is an opportunity to mobilise from across science and industry uh, to attend to some of these things. So net zero is a big thing for us and we'll be making, you'll, you'll see more and more that this will be something that's a focus of government. So uh, there's that, we've lived through the pandemic and we're seeing the way in which we've got to think differently on how we get things done. And from my point of view, when you're presented with some of these incredibly profoundly deep uh, problems, uh, I don't think we're going to get to any answers any quicker by fighting amongst each other. One, bringing people together and having a sense of ownership of this problem. Two, listening to people that care and have devoted a lot of their lives to finding answers to some of those uh, difficult, most wicked problems. Uh, all these things, there is something to be said around that and, and we can always learn too and we have in part, as much as I mentioned Arnie Caroline about the, and we talked about uh, language and transmission of knowledge and, and all that. I mean, part of that was the process through colonialisation of disconnecting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders from the land and not recognising their knowledge systems and the fact that for 65,000 years you survived on one of the toughest continents on the planet. We've got to be able to learn something from that and synthesise both systems, both uh, the, way, the way that we have developed knowledge. And so where we can do that will be incredibly important. And learning from a continent like ours with a climate that we've had to deal with um, that's gone through flood and fire and picking up on the G Governor General's points too, you know, and seeing the way that it's affected communities, but increasingly this will be a threat to us with the way that the climate's going, just makes sense to tap into knowledge. As I said, bring different corners of the community together, enhance our knowledge, apply it in a way that makes a difference. From my point of view, uh, and really that's what I'm trying to do in terms of the portfolio is to impress on the minds of uh, not just our cabinet but with you all I see us all as a force to be able to impress on the broader nation that the value of our know-how and our ideas matters and can deliver uh, something that's incredibly better for the next generation. That, that's what I think is a big job for us. I mean, I think you've got a pretty warm and receptive audience here for that message and uh, you've got a room full of people who are working at their utmost to get that research developed and applied. Warm room, the scientists never laugh at my jokes. <laughs> See what I said? Yeah. See? I thought that line would go so when much better. When you say better. the word joke, they start laughing. Oh, right. Okay, gotcha. You've got Thank to you. It. Yeah. yeah, okay. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Um, but, you know, th everyone here is working very, very hard mm. to both uh, create new knowledge and, and importantly to apply it, to get it yeah. out into the community to the benefit of, uh, of the economy, obviously, but also the environment and, mm. and the people and our relationships internationally. So um, I, I'm interested to hear how you see uh, potential improvements to the R&D ecosystem here in Australia, because I think it's safe to say that we haven't uh, fully exploited the potential that we have mm. to get that terrific research out into the world. I guess a number of uh, things. I'm always conscious when I'm speaking uh, around science. Well, obviously, there's 
you know, and everyone is now attuned to uh, emphasising the value to the economy. But I always talk about national well-being as well, improving people's quality of life. Uh, I don't want, uh, you know, again, the, the way that my portfolio was structured by the Prime Minister with industry and science was deliberate, but the way I personally view it as well is the breadth of what's happening uh, in what the work that everyone's doing. And I don't want you to all feel like you are just robots that are you know, lined up to just do one thing for the economy, as much as that's important, and I don't want to downplay that. And also want us to recognise some of the fundamental work that's being done in basic research and some of the hardest challenges and in terms of pushing the boundaries of human knowledge, we have to have an appreciation of that importance too. And so breadth in the way that we describe science to me uh, is very important. Um, but again, uh, you know, the, uh, talk about challenges and you just highlighted it. It's that one about making the trip from the ideas as the PM has said it, making new discoveries leading to making new products right here in the country. Um, that, that is not just a challenge for us. A lot of advanced economies have found that very, very difficult to overcome. Uh, and you know, I think as problem solvers, we're in a good space to do this. How we do it uh, is, is, a massive, uh, uh, is massively confronting. Uh, I don't necessarily, to be frank with you all, I don't have all the answers uh, on that and I actively engage with the community to go to learn different dimensions, perspectives, ideas on, on how we do this. Um, but there is, I think, uh, something in the notion of a national purpose, uh, a challenge that we need to overcome in some of the areas that I've mentioned, where I think we have shown when, uh, when we're pressed, we can deliver. I mean, the pandemic opened this, our eyes to this uh, very dramatically. And I, I think that's something that we need to learn from that and then expand. I, I mean, I absolutely agree. The, the research part, the R part of the R&D is crucial. You can't do the D without the yeah. R. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's really, it's our gold mine. Mm. Uh, and we do have to keep investing in that in order to be able to realise the potential benefits mm. through development and innovation. I'm, I'm keen and to... And I'm conscious too, I may not have answered all your questions. So if you need to... Yeah tap me on the forehead to answer. So back, back to the back to the, the commercialisation, mm. the, the application is probably a better word because it's not just about commercial outcomes, is it? As you say, it's about societal outcomes mm. and wellbeing outcomes too. So there may not always be a commercial impact for a very important piece mm. of research, but it may still be very important. Yeah, and having patience around that and also having patience around uh, the, the way we invest in R&D as well. I think everyone, uh, I don't think this would be the toughest statement to make in a crowd like this. We're way too low uh, on R&D investment. Uh, we do need to do better. Uh, there are a number of steps that I've been taking to try and move us uh, towards that path where we you know, look at, well, how do we lift uh, investment? And along the way, tackle some of these issues that you've raised, uh, and starting with the revitalization of the um, national science and research priorities. I'm very grateful for the chief scientist, Dr. Foley, in leading those conversations, very exhaustive uh, around the, the country and we do need, we've got other steps as well that we're contemplating. Uh, it irks me uh, not only in terms of our economic complexity being like we keep falling down the ladder, but the fact that you know we hit a 30 year low on government investment in R&D, if you don't think that makes me uh, irritated, um, well it certainly does manage to get under my skin quite a lot and We've got to find a way, I think, uh, to uh, rope together the disparate elements of research activity and, and investment in research within government uh, and also build that compelling case for business to involve itself more. Uh, and for and the particular challenge as well is to not go to research and make that the first cut when you're trying to make a save. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we're very, very lucky. Uh, well, it's, it's not luck, it's design in this academy to have some of the most influential scientists, engineers and technologists in the country as fellows. And uh, we're delighted that uh, one of our fellows, Cathy, has been uh, leading the science uh, priorities review. Another of our fellows, Sally Ann, has been leading the diversity yes. STEM review. Um, you've got Is another Sally fellow. Sally's here tonight? Sally's here. Um, and hey, Sally. 
Hi. Uh, you've got another fellow just stepping in to, to take uh, on the challenge of running CSIRO and we've already mentioned another about to take on the challenge of running ANU from another fellow. So, you know, we, we've got That's a few fellows that's worth track record. too. Mm. Yeah, indeed. Um, and, uh, and I also feel like you're making a point and it's a very good one. <laughs> I like it. Oh, that, that would be entirely coincidental, Minister. Totally. Yeah. Um, uh, you mentioned investment. Uh, and I know that the, the government has a commitment to a particular level of investment in R&D. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. And how we get there. So I, I, I understand that we, we've gone for the 3% target of GDP. How are you going to make that happen? <sighs> can I get back to you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> can we help? You certainly can. Um, and a lot of uh, what I'm trying to do as well, um, or uh, jokes aside, uh, you know, we announced today, or we announced in the last uh, 24 hours, the, um, through the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy, the 650 million over four years. I mean, that's 50,000 researchers that'll be involved there over 80 different projects. And I was particularly keen to go out and keep talking about that. And that's something that Brian Schmidt and I were talking today at the, um, the Australian National Fabrication Facility, which secured some funds out of that, and making that point to the broader media about the value of that that research and I'm uh, through the portfolio constantly trying to reinforce the value of Australian know-how but it doesn't just magically appear it requires sustained investment uh, and where you can all help me is to keep talking that up uh, and also talking to colleagues and working with uh, parliamentarians in their, their different electorates so I think today we recognize just as an aside the contributions of one particular person who's been involved in National Science Week since 2010 Jeff Crane, great science communicator, deeply passionate about it. And he said to me that for National Science Week, they, they actually beat uh, the attendance and the engagement that they was record breaking last year, they broke it this year. But Jeff was particularly keen to mention to me that in every single federal electorate in the country, there was a National Science Week event. So, which is really, really good in terms of engagement. And there is something there for you all to contemplate in terms of involving MPs and recognising and reinforcing in their mind the value of investment here and what it does, and particularly if you've got examples of how it's benefited communities, is really, uh, really important. Have you heard this story about Kylie Walker going out into Western Sydney? I can tell you about it. <laughs> that was pretty helpful. So that type of thing is really, I think, really important to emphasise in the minds of many, uh, that this investment is Im important, not just for today, not just for the forward estimates, but for the decades ahead. And, and it would be remiss of me not to mention that one of, or that two of the founders of Science Meets Parliament are also fellows, Snow Ballow and Ken Baldwin are both here tonight. <laughs> so, um, of course, that's not the only mechanism by which we ought to be engaging um, with members of parliament and senators, and, and we do strive to support that mm. uh, from day to day. Yes. Um, and, and I also am delighted that National Science Week is Australia's biggest festival. Yes. By the, by the numbers in mm. terms of participation. And I think that speaks volumes uh, for the willingness of this country to embrace knowledge mm. and curiosity. And we know that kids are naturally curious. They are natural, uh, naturally imaginative. They mm. want to know how the world works and how, uh, how things get pulled apart and, and put back together mm. again. So it is crucially important, crucially important, both now and into the future, that we teach that next generation, like those uh, mm. those kids uh, at Pompton High yeah. School that, yes, that I spoke absolutely. about that you met that you uh, mentioned earlier. And that's why, uh, if I may, just uh, briefly Please jump in. Please jump in. Uh, why we were particularly keen to emphasise in the PM's uh, prizes for science, um, in terms of science teachers as well, uh, we acknowledge them because behind most great scientists, there's been a science teacher on that issue that you just touched on on problem solving and the curiosity and engaging that and, and fostering that uh, is really important and recognising their role I think is, is vital and um, uh, there's some terrific stories and uh, I mean I've, since last year I saw some scientists or science teachers from really remote parts of the country be recognised which is terrific and we've had uh, different ones recognised this year but uh, it's always a, a bit of a personal highlight. I'm conscious I'm talking about another awards night at your awards night. <laughs> but I just think I, I think we all support the PM's prizes. Yeah, we're fans. Thank you.
Thanks for helping me out of that hole, by yeah, the way. No problem. Uh, there are hundreds of STEM education programs around Australia, though, and we're still slipping in the international rankings. So something needs to change. And, and I wonder... You're if really giving me all the rib jabs tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no we're all working on this together. Um, and it is a challenge. It really is. Because, you know, I, I wish we could say that we have fixed it. That yeah. our, our academy's been administering a STEM education program for many years, initiated by the former chief scientist, Alan Finkel. The Academy of Science, likewise, has been mm. running education programs. So they're, they're very good quality. They're proven to work. And yet... Yeah. So I'm, this is a shared responsibility. No, I agree. I wonder what you would uh, say to, to the people gathered here tonight in terms of what they can do. Well, just as one example, I mean, uh, we acknowledged uh, Sally Williams' presence tonight uh, and the Diversity in STEM uh, review. I, I wanted that broader uh, so that we looked at... On coming into government, I noticed the number of programs that we had. I think it, this alludes to always a hat tip to the points you just uh, made in terms of the number of initiatives that are around. And we're trying to look at uh, you know, some of the deeper systemic issues that, that might be there, uh, not just from a gender perspective, but from underrepresented uh, groups as well. And, uh, and we've got, a, uh, in terms of the panel itself, a, a broadly representative group of people that were involved in the panel looking at that, taking on board your points, and we're hoping to release that, that report soon because I want to be able to use some of the things that have been picked up through that review process that Sally chaired uh, to better design some of the programs as well. And I'm not reflecting on the programs before, but I think, as everyone knows, constant improvement is an invaluable tool uh, of being able to take those moments in time and seeing what works and what can be scaled up. Um, and, and again, it is just a real challenge. I mean, and I, I don't, like, I, I think deeply about the fact that decades ago, this wasn't an issue. And you looked at the way in which, uh, in terms of gender representation in some instances, particularly through World War II and, and post-war, um, and then something broke uh, that, that saw us shift markedly in terms of gender representation within STEM fields. Uh, and so this is some of the things that we're, we're thinking through. And, and obviously, I, I don't necessarily see as much as I, I believe that the review itself will give us some very important guides, uh, this is not just, well, we've done the work and we dust our hands and we, we go, well, okay, we're done, put the feet up on the table. This is a constant struggle. Uh, it will require constant focus and effort uh, for us to, to turn this around. Um, and, and from my point of view, it's something that I'm committed to in my role as science minister that we keep making that, that point of seeing how we can, can press and certainly working with organisations with academies like yours will play an important role too. Minister, I think probably the people here tonight are, are waiting to hear about the good news about the awards. Yes. So I'm only going to ask you one more question. I'm going to put you on the spot again, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. So we're going, to, we're going on a little imaginative journey. It's around 30 years or more into the future and you've had a long and successful career in leadership in this country. <laughs> what are you proud of when you look back? What, do you, what would you like your legacy to be? Um, the biggest thing that I uh, am focused on uh, is being able to, for so long, many in this community, uh, your work has been not just underappreciated, but actively resisted. And one of the first points uh, for me was to say thank you uh, to the community uh, for what you do as, in, as an incoming minister. Um, and then for me to go out into the broader community and, uh, you know, we can go through programs and, and different things that we've re reached with funding, etc. But if I may say, the biggest thing I push is for us to have greater faith in the quality of our know-how. That Australian ideas do matter. That the work that's being done by people in this room and elsewhere, we need to attach greater value to it. And to, to stop this... And it is not, I am not the first person to recognise uh, this issue. Let's just do a quick side eye to Donald Horn. But, um, you know, we, we still have this cringe. And it is something that if in my time we have been able to just get that recognised a bit again and that your ideas are valued because that, this is not a cute rhetorical point. 
Valuing our ideas influences the way decisions get made in so many different places in this country. You know, and uh, from my point of view, if we can get that, we can shake that a bit and we can get moving on that a bit more and increase the, uh, the significant weight of science within decision making in this country, uh, to, be, to be frank, uh, you know, I, I don't expect that that will be something that necessarily is achieved that I can tick a box on. But I, I'll tell you what, it's one of the big things I'm focused on as Minister, is to just get us, just recognise the value of Australian ideas and act on them. That's it. Minister, I couldn't agree more. Thank you. Thank you. Please give another round of applause to Minister Ed Husick and CEO Kylie Walker.